Lately in class, we've been talking about how the point of view influences a text. This is a supplemental lecture to the introduction on the Scarlet Pimpernel. The Scarlet Pimpernel was written during the French Revolution, where France's privileged class, the nobility and the clergy, governed the country while the productive class was heavily taxed to foot the bill. Right here you see the cartoon we talked about in class depicting the struggle. The peasant is literally supporting and carrying the clergy and the upper class. Outdated farming methods during this time also created food shortages. And even though the peasants were facing food shortages, King Louis and his queen Marie Antoinette lived in opulence. The palaces were very extravagant and nothing seemed to affect them. This is them pictured right here. By 1791, violence had already erupted in the country as frustrated peasants lashed out at the ruling class. 1791 is when a limited constitutional monarchy was created, but by 1792, a new legislative assembly abolished the monarchy, arrested, convicted, and soon executed the king and queen for treason. Right here is the guillotine. The guillotine became a symbol of the bloodthirsty terror of the French Revolution. Other names it was called by was the hot hand, the widow, the machine, the blade of the law, and the national razor. It was named after its inventor, Joseph Ignacy Guillotine, and it was created originally as a device to be sort of a humane form of execution. It was a painless and quick substitute for the clumsy act of the noose. The mechanism falls like thunder, Dr. Guillotine said, but as the guillotine became more popular in the bloodthirsty revolution, Dr. Guillotine came to hate his creation. It was actually used in executions in France until 1977, when a Tunisian murderer was the last to be beheaded. However, in 1981, capital punishment was outlawed in France. The slogan to kind of capture this time period, back, going back to the French Revolution, is let terror be the order of the day. The French Revolution calls for action against enemies of the state. Creating a common enemy made a channel for the people's rage. Danton said, let us embody terror to prevent the people from doing so. Under the reign of terror, words as well as actions led to denunciation. Neighbors denounce neighbors, and friends denounce friends. Between September of 1793 and July of 1794, over 2,500 people die under the guillotine in Paris, and over 10,000 are killed in French provinces. This time period was only the beginning of the reign of terror, and thousands that were deemed to be enemies of France were killed in the frenzy. Again, as the cartoon depicted the struggle between the classes, it was the nobility and the clergy who were considered traitors, and they were executed at the guillotine. In England, some admired the French Revolution and the ideals that it stood for, while others completely denounced the revolutionaries. England started out neutral towards France in the beginning, but it started seeing France as a threat to the stability of the region in late, in late 1792. In 1793, France actually declared war on England, the Netherlands, and Spain. So now that we've kind of talked about what's going on as far as the political climate and France in general, we're going to switch gears and talk about the author of the Scarlet Pimpernel, Baroness Orczy. She was born an aristocrat in Hungary in 1865. Her father was a member of the court of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. He was also a landowner and a composer. The family lived happily and they were pretty well off in Hungary for the first few years of her life. But when her father attempted to update his tenants' farming methods, there was an uprising and Baroness Orczy and her family fled for safety. In Budapest, her father pursued his music. He held a position on the, as the supreme administrator of the Budapest National Theater. Baroness Orczy received her formal education in convent schools in Brussels and Paris. In about 19, in, excuse me, in about 1880, the Baron chose London as their permanent home. She began learning English at the age of 15, and she studied at West London School of Art and Heatherby School of Art, where she met her future husband. Montague Barstow. They married in 1894. Together they had one son, and they worked on a book of Hungarian folk tales. Because of her title as Baroness, Baroness Orczy gained entry into London's high society. However, they lived in strange circumstances. She began writing stories and selling them to magazines in order to make some money. She wrote The Scarlet Pimpernel in just five weeks, and she couldn't get it published. First it was produced as a play, and then it was released as a novel. It became wildly popular after the play. So there's a little bit of insight on the climate of the setting of the book, The French Revolution, 
and then the background of baroness orczy.